Hey everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and today I'm going to show you how to put a crimp BNC connector on the end of a damaged RG8X uh, coax cable. Uh, this is something that, as amateur radio operators, we run into every once in a while where we have a cable that we actually have to replace the end because it's going to be too difficult to replace the entire cable as to where it runs. Or it's a long cable and we don't want to buy a brand new cable for just one end. So, oh, and by the way, hey, if you like my videos, do me a favor and subscribe. Uh, if you click on subscribe and tell it to notify you, it will send you a message every time I have a new video that comes out. Um, if you like my videos, do me a favor, click the like button. And any questions or comments, make them in the comments down below of the video. With that, let's go ahead and show you how to get that. BNC connector crimped on the end of that coax. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put an end right there. Now, I am using crimp style ends. So I have a crimp style pin for the center conductor. I have a crimp style connector with a sleeve that will crimp on and I have a piece of heat shrink in order to uh, cover everything up when I'm done and waterproof it a little bit. Anyway with that let's take a look at this. Here's our cable. I want to make sure that I get my heat shrink on and my crimp end on. Okay. So now those are both on my cable. Now we're going to take a look at this, and that doesn't look necessarily too straight for me. So I'm going to take a cutter, and I'm going to line it up and go snap, and make a nice, crisp, straight end. All right? Now... I'm going to try really hard not to get too far out of shot with this because, you know, it's, it's one of those deals where the angle of shooting this becomes exceedingly difficult. But, not your problem, mine. So, here we go. I want to figure out how far down I'm going to uh, make my first strip. So, I am going to line this up with the end here and then I am going to put my thumb right about where this section is. So if I was to hold it like this, it would look along the lines of this right here. Okay? Right like that. Now, I'm going to grab these standard crimpers. I love these crimpers. I use them all the time. But I'm not going to use them the correct way. Uh, normally, you would go to the size of cable and just, you know, cut, twist, and pull, but I can't really do that because this first strip, I need to go through the outer uh, insulation, through the uh, coaxial shield, through the coaxial wire, and through the uh, center insulation, leaving only the center conductor. So... I'm going to start with the largest size on this, and I'm going to go down, and I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to open it a little, and then do that again, like that, okay? And then I'm going to take a look at where I'm at, okay? Uh, now, if you notice, I'm through part of it, but I'm not through all of it. Now I'm going to move up a couple notches to the smaller size, and then do the same thing, and then pull. Now, there's something important to notice here. It's not perfect, right? I have that, a little bit of that right there. What I have to do is I have to make sure that I don't have any of the additional conductor over here still connecting with the center. I believe that was 
all that I missed. We're going to take a look over here as well. I'm just making sure. And what is there, I am going to grab my handy dandy little tiny clippers. And I am just going to remove that. Like so. Best that I can. I want to make sure I've got nothing that's going to interfere with that center conductor. And now I'm just going to twist this nice and tight. All right. So, there that is. That is a reasonably perfect start. Now, all of these crimp ends as you buy them could be marginally different. That's why you see me comparing a lot of things when I do this. I am actually going to put this on here like so, way up at the top like that. And I'm going to put my thumb to where it, nail to where it comes down so I can see the length of that. Because that is actually important. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to say that I need to put that end on right down here at the very end. So I remember I looked at how much it goes in. I am going to take my little cutters here and I am going to cut it to be about the same length. Just like that. Now it's time for me to get this on and I am going to hold it up kind of high here so I can actually see it. Hopefully you can see it too. And I push it straight down and now I want to look to make sure that nothing's been pushed out to the other conductor and it has not. Okay, time to grab my crimper. My crimper is designed specifically for BNC connectors and you can see that I have a little hole right there that is for this center conductor. So, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to place it right there. Um, actually, I'm going to flip it around so I get the tiny part here. And I'm going to come down to here and crimp it. And there it is. All set to go. Now, I am constantly looking to make sure I didn't goof this up, right? I got to make sure that there is nothing that is going to cross over here. So, we have another strip to make. This will be the strip from here to the end, right there. Now, a lot of guys say, well, just wedge that in there and you can really slam that center ring over the top of this. I've never really successfully been able to do that. And if you look at the way the solder connections and everything else work, they strictly solder or grab hold of the braid. So the idea of trying to fight to do that to me isn't really that great idea, an idea. Now, I can't really use a traditional stripper for this. I have to be careful. So, I am going to use a razor knife. Now, if you're not used to using a razor knife, get used to it because you're going to use that a lot whenever you're working with coax. Um, it is the easiest and the best way to be able to strip back just the outer layer. But remember, one slip and it's a pretty nasty cut. And they say never cut towards yourself. And here I am with my thumb on top of what I'm cutting. Now, Let's see how I did. 
which I did pretty well. I have a couple small places there that I can just kind of go like this, right? And I can come back here and I can go like this. And this should now pretty much just pull off like that. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of our work here. Again, you'll notice I talk about looking to make sure that none of the external wires contact the center conductor. So what you're going to see me do is you're going to see me pull some of this back, just kind of with my finger, pull it away from the center conductor to where I feel comfortable that when I put this on, everything is going to be on the outside of that conductor, which I'm there. Now, when I push this down, everything's going to snap together. The center conductor um, crimp is going to go in. It's going to snap into place. And at that point, we're committed. If I go to pull it apart, it might come apart, but it may come apart in a million pieces. So I'm just going to push it straight down, and I hear it snap. There it is all the way in, right? Now, if I was just to go ahead and slide this up now, what I would have is I would have a bunch of wire up at the top, a bunch of that uh, coaxial mesh. So I am going to take my trimmers and I am going to trim off a bit of this, just kind of go around it like a pair of scissors or whatever. And the reason I'm doing this is that this will make it so it will be a nice, tight, good, well-wired, no wire coming out the top connection. So now, all I need to do is get this up on to the position and sometimes that's a little difficult there we go because of the uh, distance of the crimp and this is this is actually really good and tight this is going to make a excellent connection now if I look at my crimpers I'm going to be able to say that this is the size and it tells me that this is the size that I want to use for this ferrule I will place this in the crimper, like so, come down on it at the proper distance, and execute the crimp. I'll pull on it. That's perfect. Now, last piece, of course, the shrink wrap. So, we're going to grab... A fire stick and we're going to go ahead and heat the shrink wrap. Now normally I would use a heat gun of some sort whether it be a surface mount uh, soldering wand or something like that to do this but I'm in my shack at uh, the house and I don't have all of my electronic tools and equipment around so for me uh, to show this to you I'm going to do it if I had to do it in the field, which would be with nothing more than fire. Now the goal here, of course, is not to set fire to anything, right? And you are dealing with an open flame here when you do it like this. You know a lot of guys who do heat shrink all the time say this is the best way to do it, but I'll tell you what, a uh, heat gun, much better choice. And there we go. All right, what do we have? We have a completed BNC connector. Okay, so next step, of course, is to test it. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we are. We're connected here. Let me pull it back 
from the VNA all the way through to <laughs> a dummy load on this side. And there are our readings, right? Pure one-to-one. -one. This tells me there's no short or anything in the cable. I can wiggle these around a little. Everything looks good. So there you go. It's a good cable now. Well, that's it. Not too difficult. There are a few little tricks in there, and I hope you caught them. Um, and uh, by the way, uh, using the Nano VNA works great for checking these. I, I did a shortcut check, really. I just checked to see what uh, the SWR was. That isn't always the world's greatest way to check, but it w is a very quick and reasonably accurate test of the coax. Um, as long as you have that uh, dummy load on the end of the coax, you should see the same thing with the dummy load pretty much hooked to the VNA directly. Anyway, with all that, thank you very much. I've got links down in the descriptions of all the tools you saw me use, and as well as the BNC connectors that we used. Uh, and uh, hey! Don't forget to subscribe, and if you like this video, click like, okay? It gets this video in front of more people that might want to see it. With all that, hey, this is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73 for now, and I really hope I hear you on the air.